The outcome for the governor's race is still up in the air. And campus food challenges get students in the spirit of giving. You're watching Carolina News Today. The race for North Carolina's governor is still undecided. With almost 60,000 provisional and absentee ballots to be counted, there may not be an official winner until after Thanksgiving. Attorney General Roy Cooper declared victory with a little more than a 4,000 vote lead, but incumbent Governor Pat McCrory said the race was too close to call. Ultimately, if they're within a 10,000 vote of each other, they can ask for a recount. Former, former Robeson County attorney Joseph Hal Kinlaw has been sentenced to 17 years in prison for bank fraud. Kinlaw used false information to get loans from BB&T and First Citizens Bank. The banks and insurance companies lost more than $18 million. Along with the prison sentence, he must repay more than $23 million. Kinlaw pled guilty to the charge back in June and was disbarred in July. At Pembroke, the Departments of History and Mass Communication held an academic mixer this week that celebrated the history of the Robesonian newspaper. Students and alumni from both departments mingled with faculty and guests of the keynote speaker. The speaker was retired Rear Admiral Clifford Sharp, whose family founded the paper and ran it for about 70 years. Professors from both departments made remarks about the role of the local press in Americans' lives. Sharp described the founding of the paper in 1907 and the way his grandparents and the succeeding generations made their livelihood through good times and bad. Sharp himself worked for the paper in his youth before he started a career in the Navy. He now lives in Moore County. UNCP students had the chance to show off their cooking skills in tonight's dining hall this week. CNT reporter Savannah Thompson tells us more. The Dining Services at UNCP hosted a cooking challenge for students on Tuesday, November 15th in the Dining Hall. Four teams of two came out for the event and were paired with a member of the Sodexo staff. Each team made a different dish for the judges. Baked shrimp with tomatoes and feta was the first dish. Second was beef and black bean sliders. Third, oatmeal pancakes. And the final group made asparagus guacamole. After each group made their different items, the judges came together to score each team. The teams that scored in the top two got to go on to the last challenge, two minute pumpkin pie. This was a speedy challenge. Each team had two minutes to prepare the dish. Team Nana MV ended up winning the challenge. They received a cookbook and a George Foreman grill. The winning chef, Nana Addo, said the winning feeling felt great and he hopes the calf can do another activity like this soon. Um, it feels great to, to be on top, to be the winner. But kudos to all the others who um, participated. It's not anything easy to just come and just cook in front of people and also not know what you're cooking. So, yeah, kudos to them. Supervisor of the dining hall, Shawnee Henderson, said they decided to try this cooking challenge because they want students to feel more involved on campus and in the cafeteria. Right there, we want to get the kids more engaged, more involved, and do more things to bring the kids out more, to just say, oh, the calf don't have the food I like, but we have different activities every day of the week. This cooking challenge was a part of the idea Sodexo is trying out called Reinventing the Meal. It is their new initiative on campus. Faculty and staff came out for the event to judge because some of their items were actually being made during the evening. All recipes are archived in the UNCP Healthy Cookbook. For Carolina News Today, I'm Savannah Thompson. Earlier this month, a potluck event in the Annex was a different way for folks to show off their cooking. CNT reporter Jonas Cabret was there to check it out. The Department of American Indian Studies hosted the 8th annual honoring Native Food Ways, an event commemorated with the Native American Heritage Month. The event took place at the UC Annex. The program was led with a prayer from one of the members of the community and was followed by a lunch that was accompanied with the local art performances on the stage. Local artists were invited to showcase their talents while the guests were enjoying their meals. In attendance were local vendors selling jewelry and promoting different cultural traditions. 
Dr. Mary Ann Jacobs, the chair for the Department of American Indian Studies, says the event was a success. We were surprised that we got as much turnout. Um, it's We weren't expecting a whole lot of participation this year because of the hurricane, because people lost food. Um, and so we were, we were happy with the folks that we got who came in. Some students in attendance were volunteering with the Office of Community and Civic Engagement. Students had an opportunity to learn more about the local culture. I really like the event. It's bringing the local community into the university and I think the food's delicious. Uh, I'm from the next county over, Columbus County, so some of the food kind of overlaps and it's kind of a walk down memory lane for me. It's like a part of my childhood. For Carolina News Today, I am Jonas Kibrit. Also recognizing Native Heritage Month was the Fall Pow Wow organized by the Native American Student Organization. This month, the American Indian Studies program hosted its annual powwow in the UC Annex. This year's attendance was lower than usual due to the hurricane, despite the fact students, faculty, and community members still gathered to celebrate the Native American culture. The ceremony included singing and dancing. Duke Energy Maintenance and Nuclear Supervisor J.D. Moore says it's nice to see the community come together and be able to share their heritage with other people. Well, it just, it just lets us know that we can take our culture that we've had for hundreds and hundreds of years and we can celebrate it with Native and non-Native alike. We can come together as Native people and just keep that heritage alive, teach our young children, teach our other um, uh, community folks and various ones about our culture. And as you hear in the background, keep some of our, our traditional songs, keep all of those alive and keep our heritage ongoing. There was also Native American jewelry and other handmade material for people to view, made by artist Miss Lowry. Lowry says she's been a part of this event for years and always enjoys it. Because of the, you know, the weather that we had, uh, it's small. But um, I love because they talk about the veterans. We usually post the flags and then they take the flags in when the sun's going down. So this time they didn't because it's small. And um, the students I love, uh, I've been kind of donating and working with NASA probably about 40 years on this campus. For Carolina News Today, I'm Sayla Lobin. A sorority on campus uses the Thanksgiving holiday as a theme for its annual fundraiser. Sigma 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 sorority members held their annual Rocksgiving Fest to raise money for Robbie Page Memorial and their new partnership with March of Dimes. Tri Sigma's risk management officer, Kendall Bauer, says they usually raise about $1,000 during their philanthropy week. March of Dimes raises money to make premature babies, make them healthier, gives money to their parents, tells them of medical expenses, and then um, the Robbie Page Memorial Center serves children. We build play atriums for children um, in hospitals. Um, we have three of them, one is in Chapel Hill, and we actually get to go there and play with kids. From Tuesday through Thursday, the organization had pastries for preemies, pie a try, and s'mores with hot cocoa in hopes to meet their fundraising goal from last year. Our event today is pie a try, so we are being pied in the face to raise money for our philanthropy, which is the March of Dimes and also uh, Sigma Service Children. So we raise money to make the lives of children better. Laurenburg is getting a new city hall. The city council voted unanimously to move ahead with a $7.5 million project. Laurenburg Mayor Matthew Block is opposed to the project and accused the council members of colluding to get the building approved. The building is estimated to be around 21,000 square feet and will house all city departments. Officials say the new building is needed because current facilities are too small and outdated. An arrest has been made in the death of a teenager whose house on Bookshot Road was on fire early Wednesday morning. The 18-year-old had shown up at a neighbor's house cut and bloody. That neighbor was a Robeson County Sheriff's deputy. According to the Robesonian newspaper, the woman died at the hospital Wednesday. A 22-year-old man faces charges in the homicide investigation. A protest against the Atlantic Coast Pipeline is planned for this weekend in Pembroke. The walk for the protection of people and places where we live will start at the Milton Hunt Memorial Park. It will end at the Piedmont Natural Gas Transfer Station. Organizers hope to educate the public about the possible harmful effects of the pipeline in Robeson County. The walk will conclude with presentations. The Atlantic Coast Pipeline will transfer 
transport natural gas from West Virginia to North Carolina. 22 miles of the 520, 550 mile pipeline will go through Robinson County. Looking to do something fun, but don't think there's anything fun on campus? Get ready for this week at UNCP. There's a bunch of fun and free events on campus this week, including concerts from the Department of Music. With Thanksgiving break, there won't be a CNT until December 2nd, so I'll be telling you about events happening from November 18th through December 1st. So, here's what's going on this week. On Friday night, November 18th, the Musical Theater Scenes Production Company takes the stage at 7.30 in Moore Hall. The company has another show on Saturday night at the same time. So if you love show tunes, make plans to attend one or, heck, both nights. On Sunday at 7.30, Percussionist Brandon West takes Moore Hall stage for his senior recital. Show your support for his talented musician and plant your backside in one of the comfy seats and enjoy the show. On Monday, there are two, count them, two performances in Moore Hall. The first is the UNCP Concert Orchestra at 5.30. If you have never heard the subtle intricacies of a classical orchestra, then you need to show up for this show. College is about new experiences, so experience this. Then at 7.30, baritone Jonathan Perkins is performing his senior recital. Crazy idea, but attend both shows on Tuesday. Show your support, expand your mind, and oh yeah, here's some great music. Tuesday, November 22nd at 6.30, pianist Sarah Middleton is performing her junior recital. That's like a senior recital, but when you're a junior. This will be the last performance in Moore Hall until after the Thanksgiving break, so check it out. If you're a fan of the unknown, check out an intriguing night at the theater. I have no idea what they'll be doing, but it's in the UC Lounge on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. If you don't like it, you can always leave to see Sarah at Moore Hall. On Tuesday evening, November 29th, Moore Hall hosts two, ponderous, two concerts. Up first is the junior recital of Terry Smith on trumpet. She hits the stage at 5.30. I wonder if she'll play any Tommy Dorsey. Anywho, at 7.30, the Global Rhythm Ensemble takes the stage for a concert. I bet this is like the Olympics of music with all the international musical flavor. And when you thought it couldn't get any more exciting and jam-packed, Wednesday, November 30th brings another two concerts to Moore Hall. I'm telling you, if you're a fan of music, you've got to be loving this. First up, 6 o'clock, is when the UNCP Vocal Jazz Choir starts their swinging show. Show your appreciation and wave your jazz hands. You'll be glad you did. Then at 7.30, the flute studio recital begins. If you're a fan of Anchorman and the jazz flute scene in the movie, then you'll probably love coming to this recital. Okay, there won't be any Will Ferrell appearances, but I can dream, can I? And that's what's going on this week at UNCP. If you're looking for more events, go to calendar.uncp.edu and check out all the events happening on campus. Until next time, I'm Joshua Shipman for This Week at UNCP. I have sand in my underpants. Braves football makes it into the playoffs. And the men's basketball team triumphs in their home opener. Deja Dykes up next with sports. In high school football, the Lumberton Pirates beat Hoke High School winning 35-32 in a close matchup. Hoke scored first when Desmond Campbell ran into the end zone for a touchdown. Going for a fourth down punt, the Bucks had a bad snap that allowed Lumberton to recover the ball to set up a touchdown pass to Tyreek McCallum. The Hoke extended their lead when da Daquan Henley scored a kickoff return for 97 yards. The Pirates later even the score at 14 when quarterback Braylon Grice connected with McCallum again for a touchdown and a two-point conversion. After a bad snap, Grice recovers the ball and finds his man to complete a perfect pass to Brandon Morris to secure the lead for the Pirates. That final score again, 35-32. The UNCP football team heads into the postseason with one of its highest national rankings in program history, checking into the number 12 spot in the final season poll by the AFCA. It was a close matchup against Concord on Saturday, with the Braves winning by only one point. 
The Braves got on the board first with a 28-yard field goal by Matt Davis. Later, Trey Chandler returned a first-quarter kickoff for a touchdown, followed by an additional three field goal kicks by Matt Davis. Those included a game-sealing 37-yarder with 11 minutes left in the game. Patrick O'Brien racked up a career-best 42 rushing yards on just six attempts. The 19-18 score marked the 10th straight home win for the Braves, who concluded the regular season with one loss. Coach Richardson praised the defense and said he's proud of the program. I've been really proud of our program all year for uh, having just a resilient mindset and mentality, and uh, they showed it today. Uh, I, thought, I thought defense uh, was, was fantastic at times. You know, the first quarter was a little bit uh, rocky until we kind of got a feel for them and settled in. Uh, but I thought they really came up big a lot uh, after that. The Braves will start the first round of the NCAA Division II football playoffs when they play Valdosta State in Georgia on November 19th. Following Saturday's game, senior kicker Matt Davis was named Brave of the Week. Davis was 4-for-4 four four on field goals in the win over Concord, making him the first UNCP player to eclipse the 100 mark in a single season. Davis said modestly he's just doing his job. I just try to do my job every week. Um, you know, I'm human. I didn't have a very good punting game today, but um, I, I, I tried to do the best I could on, uh, on field goals to make up for it. <laughs> Caroline Pridger was also named Brave of the Week for the second week in a row. Pridger racked up 21 kills in three matches this week, averaging 2.10 kills per set. The UNCP men's basketball team dominated in their home opener Wednesday night, beating Wingate 91-63. The Braves extended a seven-point halftime lead out to double digits within 67 seconds at the start of the second half. They used a 14-5 run later in the period to push the advantage out to 20 points. The Braves improved to 7-2 in home openers under head coach Ben Miller, while also recording their most lopsided win. Alex Bradley led the black and gold with 19 points. The Braves out-rebounded the Bulldogs 43-31. They'll stay at home this weekend to take on Winston-Salem State University. The women's basketball team won a thrilling season opener Monday night, winning 78-75 against Coker College. Senior Jasmine Huntley led the way for the Braves with 14 points. Six of those were, in the, were scored in the final seconds of the game to secure the victory. Eleven different players scored for the Black and Gold, who saw a 24 lead evaporate during the final 14 minutes of action. The Braves will be on the road again on November 22nd when they play an exhibition game at Greensboro. That's it for me. Here's Brandon Ford with the Braves Beat. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the Braves Beat, and it starts now. All right, Braves fans, there's no new episode of CNT during the Thanksgiving week or Thanksgiving break. So here's what's going on this week and next week in UNCP athletics. The swim team will be in Chowan on November the 18th for a four o'clock meet. Swimming is relatively new at UNCP and many students aren't aware of our Aquamid. The team competes in swimming and diving. Time to talk some Braves basketball. The men's team takes on Winston-Salem State on Saturday, November the 19th at 1 o'clock. Then on Wednesday, November the 23rd, they'll welcome Chowan for a 4 o'clock game. And finally, on November the 30th, the men dribble their way to Winston-Salem State for a road game. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock. The women's basketball team travels to UNC Greensboro for a 7 o'clock exhibition game. Then on Sunday, November the 27th, Wingate comes to campus for a 1.30 game. If you're on campus, make your way to the gym and cheer our ladies on to victory. And are you ready for some wrestling? The wrestling season begins on Saturday, November the 19th with a busy, busy day. First, they take on NC State at 10 o'clock. And then at 1, the Braves square up against Air Force. And folks, this is collegiate wrestling, so no one will be jumping off the top rope or challenging Ric Flair for the NWA title. Woo! Finally, the football team begins their playoff run on November the 19th at noon. As of now, the location hasn't been determined, so you'll have to check the website for more details. And that's this week's Braves Beat. If you're looking for more info, go to uncpbraves.com and check out all things Braves. Until next time, I'm Brandon Ford. The best there is, the best there ever was, and the best there will be. 
That's all for this episode of Carolina News Today. We'll be off for the Thanksgiving holiday. See you in December.